Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering CCNA semester four, routing and switching connecting networks. Now this is chapter seven and section 7.2, site to site GRE tunnels. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to describe the purpose and benefits of GRE tunnels, and then be able to configure a site to site GRE tunnel. So introduction to GRE. GRE stands for Generic Routing Encapsulation, GRE for short, is one example of a basic non-secure site-to-site VPN tunnel. Now GRE has been here for a long time. Now this is not secure. GRE is tunneling protocol, which was developed by Cisco, that can encapsulate a wide variety of protocol type packet types inside IP tunnels. Now I have to tell you here, to, when we start, the GRE would have been long gone, replaced a long, long time ago by IPsec. Now IPsec does provide encryption, which is secure. Now GRE is still here because IPsec cannot have one thing. IPsec cannot send routing protocols. GRE will create a virtual point-to-point -point link to Cisco routers as remote points over an IP network. GRE is designed to manage the transportation of multi-protocol and IP multicast traffic between the two or more sites that might have only have IP connectivity. It can encapsulate multiple protocol packet types inside an IP tunnel. An encapsulated protocol, now this encapsulated protocol is called a passenger protocol, such as IPv4, IPv6, AppleTop, DECnet, or IPX. An encapsulation protocol, which is our carrier, it's a GRE, and a transportation delivery protocol, such as IP, which is the protocol that carries the encapsulation encapsulated protocol. Now, GRE have GRE and IPsec is the same thing. GRE is non-secure, IPsec is secure. Now, IPsec would have like killed GRE for a long time ago, if GRE doesn't have one advantage over IPsec. The only thing the GRE has an advantage over IPsec is that its capability to send a multicast traffic for our routing protocols. So IPsec cannot send, can, our routing protocol, they cannot work with, with uh, IPsec. So for that reason, the GRE is still around and we still use GRE. We use it with IPsec, we say, okay, we're in combination G, because GRE does support routing protocols. So we have to use that, but it's not secure. So we can have it with IPsec, GRE over IPsec to make to give that security. So there's some terms that you really need to remember here. First, something called a passenger protocol. Passenger protocol is the protocol that is inside here. This is the passenger protocol. Now you can have pretty much anything here. The GRE, that's this is what's a good thing about GRE as well. Because anything is fine. It's just a passenger protocol. It's IPv4, IPv6, Apple, to any other new protocols you can bring, GRE is fine, you will be able to carry it. That's our carrier protocol. So passenger protocol, what's inside, and then what is a carrier protocol, what's carrying. And then we have the transportation protocol. The GRE will be able to transport that protocol through a transportation protocol like IP. So some of the characteristics of GRE is the GRE is defined as IETF standards in RFC 2784. In the outer IP header, 47 is used in the protocol field to indicate that is a GRE header will follow. So for example, we put port uh, protocol 47 in the IP header. If you remember the IP header, um, let me just get that one very, very quickly. So here, I've got an IP header. And if you remember these fields, yeah, I know it's been a long time ago, you have learned them on CCNA1 and so on. But there's this field here, a protocol field, just here, protocol field. Whatever we put number here, will identify, okay, what, what sort of traffic is there? So if I, if you put, for example, if you put, uh, say, 47 here, 47, that will identify, okay, well, this is a GRE packet inside here. If I put maybe uh, one, then that will know that it's ICMP uh, packet and so on. So for example, uh, you could say if I put uh, different numbers like 88 is for uh, OSPF. 
So GRE encapsulation uses a protocol type field in the GRE header to support the encapsulation of any OSI layer 3 protocol. Protocol types are defined in RFC 1700 as ether types. GRE itself is stateless. By default, it does not include any flow control mechanisms. GRE does not include any strong security mechanism to protect its payload. The GRE header, together with the tunneling IP header, creates at least 24 bytes of additional overhead for tunneling packets. In there, we have a flags, identify the presence of optional header fields, and protocol type identify the type of the payload. Ether type, for example, would be X 0x800. It's used for IPv4. To configure GRE, I wanted to think of this uh, lab that we have here, or this network scenario. We have router one and router two, and they're connected through the internet. Now, for example, we go to the physical interface. The interface is pointing the, towards the internet. Interface S0 forward slash zero forward slash zero and we give an IP address. Now, as you can see, this is a public IP address because it's going towards the internet. 209.165.201.1 and then slash 30 is the submit mask. We do no shutdown and exit. The, you will see how easy it is to configure the GRE. To configure the GRE, we have to create a tunnel, like a virtual interface. Interface tunnel zero. Doesn't matter what number you put here. Interface tunnel zero. Then we tell what mode is it. Tunnel mode GRE IP. This is a default. You don't really need to type this command. But for example, if you want to have IPv6, if you want to carry IPv6, you would say tunnel mode GRE IPv6, for example. Then we say an IP address. Then we give an IP address of that tunnel. So for example, if you can see here that we can we are giving the IP address of the um, well, it's a it's a private network 192.168.2.1 forward slash 24 and then we say in where is the source tunnel source we give an IP address of the physical interface that is connecting towards the internet because that's going to be our source we could have given a s0 forward slash 0 forward slash 0 but in this case we are giving the IP actually the IP address of the source and then we have to say the destination tunnel destination then the physical IP address the IP address that is connecting to the internet of router 2 now for this to work Router 1, this interface, needs to be able to ping this interface. Send 5 pings, you should get a file reply to be able to work. The source of the tunnel and destination of the tunnel, they should be able to communicate directly. And then that's it. We type exit. With the GRE, we have the capability of running routing protocols on the GRE. As you can see, we we enabled OSPF, process ID 1, and we advertise in the network, the tunnel network. We're not advertising the physical, whatever the, the, the interface IP address, which was connected to the internet. We only advertise in the tunnel network, 192.168.2.0 and the wildcard mod 0.0.0.255. And we put that in area zero. We do similar configuration, this time on router two. So we go to interface S0 forward slash zero forward slash zero. This is a public interface, public facing interface, given IP address, public IP address, and do not shut down. Then we go and create an interface tunnel zero as well. Let's tell what mode is it. So it's IP. Give an IP address of the tunnel interface. So 192.168.2.2. Now here, this interface IP address has to be in the same subnet as this interface of router one. So for example, you can see 192.168.2.1 on router one, 192.168.2.2 of router two. So they are in the same subnet. Then again, we tell him where the source is and where the destination is. So for as long as the source can ping the destination, so the tunnel will, will go up, will work, start working. And after we advertise the OSPF, we enable OSPF on router two and we advertise the same network, then we should have a neighbor. Create a neighbor on the tunnel. So all the OSPF traffic will actually take the tunnel. That's it. That's all there is about the configuration. The most mistakes that are going to be on the GRE tunnel configuration is the tunnel, so tunnel source and tunnel destination is misconfigured. Or this interface cannot ping this interface for some reason or another. Otherwise, if you configure this correctly, it will work. When we verify to verify the GRE, we do show IP interface brief. And now we want to look at only the tunnel. So tunnel zero 
and we can see the IP address of the tunnel and the interface the layer 1 and layer 2 is up. Show interface tunnel 0 what we can see from here is that again we can see the IP address of the tunnel interface and layer 1 and layer 2 information. Important thing with this command is that we can see what is our source IP address and what is the destination IP address. As you can see here that's our source and the destination is. If the tunnel doesn't work for some reason have a look at this. Are these correct? Can this ping this destination? And you can see the tunnel protocol, the transport is GRE IP. The protocol is GRE and the transporting protocol is IP. Show IP OSPF neighbor that we can see that we have a neighbor with that router ID. We haven't changed router ID. And we can see this point to point thing because that tunnel it creates a point to point. And the interface that we created this neighbor is through interface tunnel zero. Thank you very much for watching this section 7.2 side-to-side -side GRE tunnels. Please have a look at other videos and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Astrid Krasnici and next video 7.3 introduction to IPsec. Bye-bye.